Tour takes about an hour and it's eight dollars a person. So here we are in the Grand Lodge of Scottish Rite of Freemasonry here in Washington, D.C. We are inside the building right now. We're going to take a little bit of a tour, check out some of the scenery in here. This is Albert Pike. He was our Grand Commander from 1859 until 1891 when he died in office. Uh, the reason why he's so significant is because he rewrote the rituals of masonry and he rewrote the code book, Morals and Dogma. We have his body downstairs. Was there another like kind of Grand Commander before Albert Pike? Yeah, there were several Grand Commanders before him, but he's the most prominent. Uh, he died at 82 years old, and so we asked every Grand Commander to step down when they're 81. I was rather blown away by the, uh, really the occult significance of the architecture inside the building. Um, we were shown one of the main ritual rooms where they conduct their rituals, where only members of the 33rd degree are allowed in there, and the tour guide himself didn't seem to know a whole lot about the actual symbols and the meaning behind uh, some of the symbolism. So we call this room our temple room. Uh, it's not actually designed to look like a Christian temple. You'll um, notice the dome above us. It weighs 330 tons, and there's only steel found at the base of it. The reason why there's a hole or an oculus is because Masons believe anything that is perfect must be created by God. Uh, there are 33 chairs in this room. There are 33 degrees in Scottish Rite Masonry, uh, 33 states in the southern jurisdiction, so that's why you'll see the number 33. All the wood in this room is from Russia. It's Russian walnut. The altar in the middle of the room is black marble quarried from Lake Champlain in New York. And the Hebrew writing in the middle says, God said, let there be light, and there was light. So there's three with one missing, it looks like. Is this the I don't know exactly. north, south, west, and the east is missing, or? No, um, that would be the east. That would be the east? Because that's north. Right. Right. Um, I don't know why that is missing, actually. I asked him why there were only three lights at the altar, and uh, he said he wasn't too sure why, but there are three because one represents the east, one represents the west, one represents the south, but in masonry, the north is the place of darkness. And of course, uh, according to the Bible, the Bible tells us that the north is where God resides. Masonic Holy Bible. When was this built? The building? Uh, 1911. It was started and it was finished in 1915. Oh. Uh, this was the architect's first major building. He went on to do the National Archives, National Gallery of Art, and the Jefferson Memorial. The snakes represent chaos, and the further up you go in the windows, the more light they let in, symbolizing enlightenment. So it's supposed to mean when you join masonry, you join at a time of chaos in your life, and the further up you go in degrees, the more enlightened you become. So in the beginning, you just have to be open to the concept of there being a god, uh, but as you work your way up the ranks and you gain enlightenment, he showed us windows in there that get brighter and brighter as you go up. And I found that very interesting. The windows were also surrounded by serpents. I asked him, what is the symbolism of the serpent? He said that's all about order out of chaos. The, the serpents represent chaos. And that is the motto of Freemasonry, really, is order out of chaos. This is precisely how they can gain their control. The pillars are 30 tons of Windsor granite uh, quarried from uh, uh, Indiana, and the velvet is 400 pounds of Italian velvet. Wow. <laughs> this chair we have right here is called the Tyler's chair. Mm -hmm. The man who sat here held 
the sword ceremoniously. It was his job to guard this room during council sessions to make sure people didn't listen in. Of course, we have the sword downstairs, and it's not sharp. I don't think he had to hit anyone with it, but you never know. And Know Thyself is a quote from Pythagoras. Uh, it's a quote that Masons take to heart. chamber. You'll notice the Tyler sword right here. This is the, the sword the man held uh, that I was telling you about upstairs. As you can see, it's not sharp. This is the Grand Camp Commander Scepter. It's what he would carry in to start council sessions. And this case will only be opened in October of this year for a council session. Uh, council sessions every other year in October. This is where the 33 inspector generals would meet. There are 33 states in the southern jurisdiction, and we are the headquarters of the southern jurisdiction of Scottish Rite Masonry. Uh, they would meet in here at night. They would discuss legislative and money issues in here. Upstairs is mainly used for rituals. The ceiling actually used to be open. It used to be an open ceiling, but they closed that off because the meetings in here were held at night. There was no point having an open ceiling. And the reason why there's a Bible, a Quran, and a Torah on the altar here is because you don't have to believe in uh, Jesus Christ. You can be uh, anyone, uh, any religion just so long as you believe in God uh, and be a Mason. These are just the holy books our leaders pray to. The reason why they have the Quran and the Bible and the Pentateuch uh, is because, uh, as he said in his own words, you don't have to believe in Jesus Christ. You just have to believe in the idea that there is a God. And that is because Freemasonry is very much an ecumenical movement. It brings together all kinds of religions because you have to be open to the concept of there being a God. They refer to the God as the grand architect of the universe. That way it can encompass everyone on earth and and there can be members of the brotherhood from the muslim world members of the brotherhood from the christian world all over the world bringing them all together so if you donate one million dollars or more you get your name on a plaque here and you get a picture downstairs we do have some plaques that open here so if you all have a million dollars just lying around we accept checks <laughs> cash credit cards the bush family and the studebaker family are up there uh, although neither George Bush Sr. nor Jr. was a Mason. The light well in the back there was put in in 1993. There are 33 beams of light, and fiat lux uh, is Latin for let there be light, and ordo ab chao is order from chaos. What is the significance of the like order of chaos? It's like a Masonic motto almost. So when you join Masonry, you're, they say your life is in chaos, like you're not completely, you're not orderly. Mm -hmm. But the further up you go in Masonry, the more order you gain, the more enlightenment you gain. Fourteen U.S. presidents were Masons, but the last one was Ford. Bill Clinton was a Malay, which is a junior Mason. <laughs> never became a full mason. I remember reading online that the, this building is based off of a, like a Roman uh, it, design. It's the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Okay. It's, um, it's the tomb of the emperor, the king Halicarnassus. And on either side of our pillars of charity are our crypts. So Mr. Pike is buried six feet behind here, and Mr. Cowles is buried six feet behind there. Uh, Mr. Pike was moved here in 1944. We were fighting World War II at the time, so there was no mayor of Washington, D.C. So we had to ask the U.S. Congress to, if we could move his body across state lines. So it took an act of Congress to bring Mr. Pike here. Mr. Cowles lived in this building. He was our grand commander in the first half of the century. Uh, he lived in this building, he died in this building, and he wanted to be buried here. Uh, I've been told that these two men roam the halls as ghosts. I have, never, I have not seen that, but if you do see them, let me know. Albert Pike is a main component of this building. We were shown statues of Pike. We were shown where his body is entombed inside of here. And, uh, and, and Albert Pike is also the one who wrote Morals and Dogma. And he very openly talks about 
who the true God of Freemasonry is. And in Morals and Dogma, he mentions that when you look to the light, uh, as they told us over and over again, Masonry is about finding the light. And Albert Pike, which he clearly is highly revered, tells us in his book, Morals and Dogma, that the light bearer is Lucifer. So this room houses our Albert Pike collection. Not only was Albert Pike our Grand Commander from 1859 until 1891 when he died in office, he was also a well-known teacher, lawyer, explorer, and Confederate general. He fought for the South during the Civil War because he thought the South would treat the Native Americans better. He was born in Massachusetts, but he, uh, he did not fight for the North. All the books you see in this room are from his personal library, and he wrote about half of them. So this room is our uh, banquet hall. This room holds 400 people, and we mostly rent it out for charity events, speakers, dinners, that sort of thing. But there is no alcohol allowed in this building, so no casino events or weddings are held here. Most Masonic lodges do not allow alcohol, except for Shriners lodges, which is Shriners is another set of paintings. These two paintings here are Masonic paintings, uh, painted by Brother John Melius in the 70s. This painting is of George Washington laying the cornerstone to our capital. This is significant because he's wearing his full Masonic ritual regalia. He's got his square and compass, he's got his apron, he's got his gavel. And the three men to the right of him here are holding corn, oil, and wine, which are Old Testament gifts of prosperity. And they were leaders of lodges from around here. Now that cornerstone has been lost to history. People have tried looking for it and they cannot find it. They bury cornerstones under the ground. People have told me that that cornerstone has some Masonic writing on it. Whether that's some lost legend or a mystery on it, I don't know, but we cannot find it. This painting is of George Washington taking the oath of office as our first president. This is in New York because New York was the capital at the time. And the reason why this painting is so significant is because the man in blue holding the Bible is a Mason, and he's holding a Masonic Bible. That is the Bible that has been used by basically every president since George Washington. Although Barack Obama did not use that Bible, he used Abraham Lincoln's personal Bible. Uh, that Bible has still been used by basically every president. What's the difference between a Masonic Bible versus... A uh, Masonic Bible has Masonic inscriptions in it. It's still a King James Bible. It just has Masonic inscriptions, and they use it for rituals. So this hallway contains paintings of each degree's regalia. So... These plaques here say which degree you are. So the 22nd degree is the Knight Royal Axe, Prince of Libanus. And this uh, text here is the lesson that you learned at that degree. You all can feel free to take a look at each one of the degrees. Take your time. scholarships, to funding hospitals, uh, to paying uh, to uh, homeless shelters, that sort of thing. Masons do a lot. It's just not something people know about. Is the philanthropy um, public, or do you mean they don't know it, about It's it public. Means? It's just people don't pay attention to it, or people have certain assumed things about masonry, like they think it's a cult or something like that. They choose to ignore this sort of thing.
this room in here uh, contains international books, so minutes or notes from lodges around the world, they get sent to us and we categorize them. Other famous Masons include Gene Autry, Audie Murphy, Douglas MacArthur, Brad Paisley, Arnold Palmer, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. There have been many famous people that have been Masons. We call this room our Americanism, Americanism Museum. It's dedicated to famous Americans who have been Masons. Some highlights include a portrait of George Washington that you see there. We have the 33rd copy. We also have a replica flag of the Masonic flag that was put on the moon. The Masonic flag was put on the moon? Yep. Buzz Aldrin was a Mason. He put a Masonic flag on the moon. So he left more than just like it? Yeah, a, lo a larger version of it. They brought 14 flags to the moon and only took a couple back. We've only ever seen pictures of the American flag. Stuff you don't know. Yeah. A Freemason. Was Dr. Seuss a Mason? No, he was not. <laughs> this is just for kids. Oh, okay. We were allowed into the library of uh, Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, where it's probably one of the largest collection of Freemasonic uh, books inside. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm rather blown away, and uh, it's it was it was quite the quite the experience. I could almost feel the creepy evil energy coming off of this place just from being inside.